Apple's latest base MacBooks are of really great value compared to last year, especially the base MacBook Pro, which now packs a powerful quad-core processor, the touch bar, and the T2 chip. And what's most impressive is that it's still priced at only $1,300, and it performs close to as well as the more expensive $1,800 model. The MacBook Air didn't really change much at all since last year, but it actually got $100 cheaper. So you may be asking, what's the catch? How was Apple able to offer so much more value this year, and did they have to sacrifice something? The answer is yes, they did, and it has to do with the SSD storage. After some testing with the new 2019 MacBooks, we found that the storage transfer speeds have actually gone down this year. For example, the 2017 $1300 MacBook Pro with the base 128GB SSD got around 2300 megabytes per second read speed, compared to only around 1300 megabytes per second on the 2019 base model. That's a 1000 megabyte per second drop in speed, and even if you upgrade to the 256 gig SSD, it's still around 1000 megabytes per second slower than the 256 gig on the $1800 MacBook Pro which shows that only the base model has been affected. And we see the same thing on the MacBook Air as well. This year's model dropped by around 600 megabytes per second read speed when comparing it to last year's 128 gig SSD. So we can clearly see that the SSDs this year are definitely slower. But the biggest question that we have is will the slower storage speeds negatively impact the machines during day-to-day -day use? And if so, by how much? And even though they're slower, are they still fast enough for most people? Well, for starters, we compare the $1300 base MacBook Pro's SSD to Dell's brand new XPS 13 laptop with a 256 gig SSD, and we found that the MacBook was actually still slightly faster than the XPS. And that's the story for most Windows laptops, packing SSDs that are slower than the ones that come in MacBooks, even with the speeds being slower this year. And interestingly, if you grab the base model and jump to a 256 gig SSD or larger, the write speeds actually go up significantly. And that's because the larger storage drives have more individual NAND flash chips on them than on the 128 gig SSD allowing them to work together to provide faster write speeds. But the point of this testing is that for many years, Apple was putting in top-of-the-line SSDs, which in my opinion, were overkill for most people, especially on the base models. So to find out if those old SSDs were actually overkill, and if these new ones are still fast enough, we decided to run a few tests to see if the extra SSD speed actually makes a noticeable difference in day-to-day -day tasks. So we took the base 2019 MacBook Pro with a 256GB SSD upgrade and compared it to the $1800 models matching 256GB SSD, which has around 1000MB per second faster read speeds at 2600MB per second instead of 1600 on the base Pro. Our first test was a simple restart test which has to read and load up all the system files to start up, and the base MacBook Pro was only a few seconds behind. We then loaded up two identical libraries in Final Cut Pro 10, and the $1800 MacBook was again, just slightly faster. We also opened up Lightroom Classic, and saw exactly the same results as before. So it seems like opening apps and starting up macOS is just slightly faster, going from 1600 to 2600 megabytes per second read speed. So in this case, I definitely take higher performance instead of faster SSD speeds. So we moved on to seeing if we could max out the SSD speeds during heavy workloads using Final Cut Pro and Lightroom, and then opening up the activity monitor to see how much data was being read or written per second. And throughout all of our testing, we didn't see it go higher than 87 megabytes per second. That's nowhere near the maximum transfer speeds of even the slower 2019 SSDs. And the main reason why we only saw a high of 87 megabytes per second is because the storage has to wait on the processor and graphics to render and export the files, which is what you'll experience while using basically every app out there. We then hooked up one of the most popular external SSDs, Samsung's T5, and transferred large files to each MacBook Pro to see which one finished first, and both took exactly the same time. That's because the MacBook SSDs can only transfer data as fast as the connected device can transfer data, and most external SSDs, like the T5, are limited to only around 500 megabytes per second read and write speeds. And basically every flash drive and every SD card reader, even UHS-2, are even slower than that. 
so you basically won't see any difference in transfer speeds unless you're using a top of the line Thunderbolt 3 external SSD, which are extremely expensive. And if you're willing to buy one of those and can actually put the higher transfer speeds to use, you most likely will be buying a higher end MacBook Pro with even faster SSD speeds. The point I'm trying to make is that most people who are in the market for a budget oriented 13 inch MacBook probably won't be able to max out the speed of even the slower SSDs that come on the new base models. And even though there is a small difference in boot up speed and loading up apps, the base SSDs are more than fast enough already. So if I had to choose between having better processor performance, extra features, or a cheaper price, instead of having a faster SSD, I would sacrifice the extra SSD speed every single time. So we've gotta give props to Apple for making this choice, because getting $100 off the MacBook Air, or getting much more performance and features on the base MacBook Pro for the same exact price is well worth the slower SSD speeds that most people in that market probably won't use anyway. And due to the amount of users that commented on our videos saying that they're finally gonna pick up a MacBook thanks to the awesome value the new base models pack, we'd have to say that the general public agrees with us as well. If this video helped you make a decision to buy a new MacBook, make sure to use those links down in the video description below to help out our channel. Thanks for watching, make sure to tap that like button and click the circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those two videos right there, and we'll see you in the next video.